Morning, everyone. Oh, that's nice and loud. Well done for getting here. Well, pretty much Soho 9.30, so well done. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thanks for coming on. This is um, our second year of running the uh, Platform One events, um, whereby we, we try and take what we feel is an underlying theme that's going on from NAB and then bring that technology here to the UK and the manufacturers to talk about what's going on. Uh, last year, we really focused on the Mac Pro as a platform, uh, especially with the migration to uh, Intel chipsets and obviously um, the acceleration with the NVIDIA cards and uh, CUDA that was being used at the time. That was very successful. Um, this year has been uh, is a much more focused subject in the world of file-based management and the intricacies that we need to understand about that. So we've got a lot of we've got five seminars today, perspectives from Avid um, and obviously many other manufacturers. So our, our conversation throughout the whole of today is all going to be about files and. This seems to be a constantly confusing subject. Um, people misinterpreting what a wrapper is, what a codec is, what a file is, etc. So I thought we would just break a file down and have a look into it and what we're trying to achieve with a file. Because it's actually a, a very complicated arena. And we're going to be talking about standards later on throughout the day. But the reality, the problem we have with standards is that we've got too many of them. Um, but it's something we just have to deal with. Um, so let, let's let's start getting down um, to understanding the codec. And um, I actually thought I'd change the title because it should be understanding a file because um, that's immediately a, a mistake on there. So let's start. Well, first of all, we have our video layer. And we have to deal with a tremendous amount of uh, elements within our video layer. Um, I remember the days when we used to deal with all the problems of power and NTSC. Well. I think they've been multiplied by billions rather than a few. Um, we obviously not only do we have to deal with aspect ratios, um, not only in 16 by 9, 4 by 3, 14 by 9, but when you can have 9 by 16, 185, we can have infinite aspect ratios now. And we do a lot of that. We're doing a lot of uh, quick time movie trailers, which are typically 1920 by 800, um, which are going on the web because we have no definition now of how that image is going to be played. Frame rate, um, later on today, you're going to hear about a project we managed. It's gone, gone to theatrical relief that had 60 different frame rates Okay, within one project. Um, that's going to be the one, the, the Life in the Day project. Frame size, again, infinitely variable now. We don't just have 720 by 576. In our traditional TV world, we dealt with square pixels and oblong pixels for um, 16 by 9. Now we have an infinite variety of those aspect ratios and frame sizes that we have to deal with. One of the other elements that's catching us out all of the time is gamut. Um, again, our industry standard for PAL with um, uh, 16 being black and 240 being white um, hasn't been followed in the computer world where they think 0 to 255 is black to white. So as you can imagine, as you're moving codecs around into different systems, your color gets all washed out or gets washed in either way. Um, but it, it does cause a lot of problem. We have to be aware of that when we're doing our translations. And there are actually products out there today that as you migrate between uh, uh, separate elements of their software, change the gamut as you go through. So I think we can all appreciate how bad and awful that is for us in the TV world. So even before we reach any form of compression, we've got to deal with all those elements in our, in, into a video codec. And then, of course, we then actually apply the compression type we're going to use. And that's when we start using H.264, MPEG-2, um, uh, et cetera, onto those systems. So that's our video layer. We obviously have to deal with audio. We mustn't forget our audio. And again, we have the, the same amount of problems, uh, bit, de uh, bit rate, sample rates. Um, we obviously have frequency. We, need, we have the different codecs with AAC, AC3, PCM. Um, obviously, Dolby E is starting to play a very big role for us at this moment in time. So that's the codec that we have to deal with in, in the audio element. And then next, what we have to do is we have to think about, well, how are we going to link those files together? Um, so what we have to do now is we have to think about uh, our multiplexing types. And that equally causes us other uh, layers of problems. So for example, one of the big issues we're, we're certainly dealing with at the moment is people managing um, broadcast file-based deliveries. And typically, we're looking for six or eight channels of audio um, on our broadcast file-based deliveries. So you can't just pick up any multiplex type. Typically, you're going to work with a transport stream um, rather than a, a basic stream on there. We then have to think about how we bring different codec channels into our, our file and how we actually multiplex them in there. So most commonly, we're going to be using transport stream. But it's not a case of simply arming your audio tracks like you used to do on your beta deck and saying record eight channels. So there's more thought that's in the process. So we, we get to this area, and we still haven't really reached the point that people treat this as a codec, or what they typically call a codec. And this is one of the areas that has caused the most confusion, because people tend to think, 
the wrapper is the codec, and they say, I want a QuickTime file, or I want an MPEG, etc. You, know, you always see a smile in the audience. Clearly, this is a common fallacy. So really, all that happens now is the wrapper now gives us, presents us as a single file, and that wrapper gives us the information so we can understand what's actually inside that file. So inside that file, we obviously have our video, we have our audio, and our multiplex types. And in addition to that, we're typically, uh, m most of the modern rappers today also give us a time code track. Um, and that's really where it ends in regards to metadata that's associated um, with a codec at that moment in time. So rap is the big one and say, I, I constantly get the, the question, uh, well, it's a quick time, or it plays on my desktop, why isn't it working out here? Um, and those are the things we need to be aware of and do that. Now, we're going to be spending um, a lot of today talking about automation things, and, and really the key now is with metadata. Um, and this is where we now finally have what we call a container. So this is our MXF, um, and you're, we're going to be talking a lot about MXF. So the beauty about MXF is obviously, A, it combines all of these elements, but most importantly now, it allows us to add an XML layer, so a, a full uh, programmable metadata layer. Um, and that's critical now for moving our systems around. So OP, uh, OP1A is probably going to be the most common standard. Um, OP Atom, obviously P2, actually Avid uh, use OP Atom internally. Um, but with OP Atom, we have separated audio files. So we're not moving a single file around. OP, OP1A means we move everything across as one file. So that's obviously much more favorable when we're actually moving uh, uh, data, video, audio, etc., together in one package. So we're going to hear a lot about that. Um, and we're going to obviously talk a lot about that as our, our broadcast deliverables. Because um, we're certainly seeing at the moment that OP1A is very much going to be the standard for broadcast file-based delivery, which is what we're going to talk about next. Um, but XML and moving that date metadata and utilizing that metadata is going to be fundamental throughout our conversations all of today. So I just wanted to introduce you to that. Um, a nice example of this is XDCAM. Uh, XDCAM is um, broadcast standard gamut frame sizes, etc. Uh, it's an MPEG-2 codec. Um, it's um, PCM audio, multiplex with transport stream, wrapped in MPEG-4 inside an OP1A container. That's the standard. So at least we know we have a stand on there. And to be honest, um, certainly in, in the US at this moment in time, the XDCAM uh, uh, MXF standard has pretty much been accepted as the main broadcast file-based delivery. That's what we're doing more than anything else at the moment in time. The key is that handling the audio elements with the separated audio channels, the AC3 um, pair, et cetera, onto the system. That's really what's given us most complexity on those deliverables. Um, currently here in the UK, um, that there is obviously a consortium of uh, broadcasters, Sky, BBC, Channel 4s, ITV, who will be introducing a broadcast file base spec, um, which we're expecting to come out in June. Currently, it's looking like they're going to go for AVC uh, 100, AVC Intra 100 as, as their codec choice. Um, now, typically, AVC Intra um, has been associated with OP Atom, um, but we also think they're going to wrap it in OP1A again for that single file format. So. We're yet to hear that, but that'll be coming out in June. Cool. So I think that it was just important just to iterate, you know, what a codec is, what a file is, et cetera, on this system, because I think that's the theme very much throughout the day. Um, we're going to carry on now. So this seminar is really going to be focusing about file-based deliveries and um, how do we manage QC and how do we uh, manage the automation of file-based deliveries. So um, I'm pleased to welcome, first of all, we have Ashish, who is from uh, Intera. And he's going to talk about Baton, the QC file-based QC product. Thank you.